डियर फेसबुक व्यूअर्स प्यूर यूरोलॉजी व्यूअर्स गुड इवनिंग वन एंड ऑल वी आर डिस्कसिंग मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स सर्जिकल टेक्निक्स बट द सेम टाइम सम इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स वी आर कवरिंग इन बिटवीन टुडे वी हैव एन इम्पॉर्टेंट स्पीकर हु इज टॉकिंग अबाउट मेन्स हेल्थ एज यू ऑल नो मेजॉरिटी ऑफ द डॉक्टर्स इफ नॉट द पेशेंट्स दे नेवर बॉदर टू check their bp and sugar and after 40 years they will be working uh, day and night uh, and then they may focus on the earnings or children's education like that but nowadays uh, health checkups are including blood pressure hba1c cholesterol but that is not enough if you go into the depth only we can understand men's health uh, is not only sugar and bp and one tmt test there are various hormones which are involved in the body mental health as well as the bone joints your agility even some people who are doing lot of gym if uh, they are not able to take mental health because of the hormonal imbalance uh, everything gets affected and i also wanted to know from sir today that uh, uh, even how 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 one should have the sexual life the people say that uh, when you are do active do doing sexual life and suddenly if the sexual life is decreased it is a sign of uh, 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 the atherosclerosis or other diseases these are all important we we work day and night we learn so many surgeries we practice on the patients but we may miss the bus when it comes to us uh, some of the gym masters say that when did you get your testosterone nobody nobody might have got testosterone done because you think it will be normal because you are getting mistakes and bad that is not the way so to talk, to listen about that today's speaker is dr rajiv sul sir uh, in the urology society nobody uh, i think needs uh, any introduction of sul sir but uh, i have shared uh, the uh, link to many of the ima doctors being ima secretary i have shared this uh, to the indian ima doctors because it's a common topic we should think that we are doing some social service so thank you rajiv sul sir i wanted to ask you brief uh, uh, about your career before we go to the talk sir rajiv sul sir good uh, good, good evening sir uh, good evening thank you very much for inviting me as uh, you have uh, mentioned uh, just now that importance of men's health sexual health or andrology in urology or otherwise also for all the specialties sub specialties uh, is becoming more and more evident more and more important and more and more uh, studied topic and uh, we are we are uh, on the verge of getting this recognized as the national necessity health necessity global necessity and also the symbol of uh, the uh, overall uh, health for all slogan but i want to ask you briefly uh, about your career if you don't mind 5 minutes uh, sir where was your mbbs sir okay i i did my schooling from i belong to himachal himachal sir. pradesh the sir. hilly area and then uh, my family moved to delhi and uh, i did my schooling here i did my mbbs in delhi molana jad medical college then i did my post graduation in general surgery again in delhi that was in delhi university attached to dr ram manohar lohia hospital and uh, finally i did my mch from delhi all india institute of medical sciences and okay. this is all which i did and uh, in both uh, during my ms time uh, I, i i received that uh, the research the thesis gold medal uh, i am fortunate that i served urology thereafter in in at the state level in delhi which year, which the, year you did your ms aims sir mca aims which yeah, year I, i i did in 96 because uh, for 10 years i was heading the surgical unit before that so i was in uh, general surgery unit head and after that i came and i did my uh, mch and i joined there in 93 sir uh, uh, i have seen many times you are uh, you you mingle with all the people you are always active you can talk to any person right from the junior most urologist to the top most politician of the india and uh, how was your 
what was your mental psychology during your ms period i wanted to know how how was you as a student are you a leader are you a leader or only academician uh, it all started in my schooling when i was of course uh, in the academics only and uh, i was uh, uh, i was the class perfect class monitor of obviously and then what about the sports uh, sports uh, only indoor not no outdoor sports i have uh, participated but i was doing lot of trekking and i have participated in uh, uh, several trekking uh, programs uh, run by youth hostels and also um, in the himalayan and in western ghats goa and other places for... have you been ever involved in the public agitations as a leader during your uh, delhi any movements you have participated or not so keen uh, i will i will tell you that that was the passion and uh, when i was student mbbs student third year uh, i was involved in the three month agitation that was in front of uh, the health minister's house the health minister was uh, doc uh, raj narayan uh you must be knowing that famous uh, raj narayan was our health minister and okay. we got the internship stipend increased after that again i was involved i cre i was the founder of joint action council of service doctors where railway central health services mcd ndmc esic and 10 other organizations has run country wide agitation and uh, when you are talking about agitation i led that and i i am still the chairman even after 35 years and uh, so, uh, when you when you when you had recently covid two times admitted your morale in facebook and everything generally you take tough things uh, without much expression on your face uh, and you absorb that don't you think it will increase your bp like that and are you it you are naturally shock absorber see i'll i'll tell you it is the mental uh, framework and uh, bp and all is a natural things which will increase with with the course of your uh, 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 mental ability to handle the things what i have already always taken multitasking and uh, i always uh, pursued uh, that i should uh, take up whatever others are finding difficult so therefore i'll tell you for the first time in the history of india i was when i was st uh, struggling for revival of indian medical and health indian medical service uh, after independence you know that after 77 it was stopped by then prime minister after emergency and uh, since then we are we are doing and through ima and all i have struggled i have held uh, positions in uh, dma as the senior vice president in ima i am the standing uh, committee chairman for service doctors i am uh, co chair for uh, men's health and in ima i am also the member of the sexual health committee very so, good uh, i when, have uh, when when you when you who is the urologist in india as a senior influenced uh, a bit of your career can you name one or two persons who i'll, I'll tell you that he was not uh, actually the urologist but he was the general surgeon on in those days that was the early 40s what and is uh, dr jp singh was there and dr b s rana who were uh, doing urology largely in delhi and uh, after that uh, they persuaded me that you take up urology as your career even when i was in surgery the posts of surgery were uh, urology were created in ramanor loya hospital in as back as uh, 82 but nobody was there i was sent for special training in names and subsequently i took up it as career and uh, the uh, he was dr jp singh he was the great uh, uh, idol uh, the moral uh, for me and he was the son in law of uh, choudhary charan singh who was the prime minister of india and uh, that has given me the, the first hand uh, um, um, uh, experience and uh, i was able to negotiate the doctors demands with the uh, uh, rajiv gandhi chandrashekhar uh, narsimha rao bp singh and so many so, so i was directly uh, 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 with the uh, prime minister uh, in the agitation before we go to the talk last question sir how how do you manage time do you work too many hours and uh, losing the sleep or you manage coolly in limited hours 
this is the last question after that we will go to the talk i will introduce you i i, I get up at uh, 5 am and uh, it was happening in those days when mobiles were not there and transport uh, was not there and i had to meet almost 70 80 for for our demand 70 80 mps every day so i used to start my day at uh, 6 am with the first call I'll, i'll i'll name also i'll not hesitate today i was making first call to uh, lal krishna dawani ji because he had given me that time and a whole day when i am working and i was peak of my agitation the health minister india uh, of india at that time uh, was uh, rashid masood and before that rafi kalam and he had given me time of 230 am so you can uh, imagine that uh, how i was managing and every day i was talking to almost the leader of each political party so actually we were starting the academics and you have uh, just explored my yes yeah, sir a lot of interest uh, yeah. some audience are joining so we will uh, go to the official introduction of uh, dr rajiv sood who is very dynamic always positive enthusiastic and focused his life on mental health uh, Dr. Rajiv Sood is MBBS, MS, MCH Urology Consultant, Urologist, Parliament of India, Chair Academics Department of Urology and Renal Transplant, uh, ABB MS and RML Hospital, New Delhi. Dr. B. C. Rai, National Awardee, Gold Medal, USI Gold Medal, ASI Gold Medal, and North Zone Urology Society of India, President Men's Health Society of India, Co-Chairman IMS Standing Committee for Men's Health, Past President Urology Society of India. founder dean abba ms and dr rml hospital chairman indian school of urology government council member delhi medical council chairman service doctor cell dme member ims standing committee for sexual health chair ims standing committee for central service doctors and allied chairman education telemedicine and r and d delhi medical council amazing sir this is absolutely amazing uh, whatever said and done apart from urology being the president of urology society of india you could manage this is absolutely amazing with this introduction i will hand over the program to dr rajiv sul sir sir we have 20 to 30 minutes of time please enlighten what is men's health what are the precautions so that everybody will be aware of that and at least doctors will improve their men's health after 40 thank you sir thank you dr vadi and uh, it 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 was the great introduction and uh, the great chat and uh, interaction in the beginning and uh, when i i was also getting um, myself explored um, uh, in this journey but i'll tell you that my journey always had been that uh, i always wanted to take new new things and uh, with that i founded the urology department in uh, in uh, delhi rml hospital i founded the undergraduate medical college as during my journey i am for 38 years there in between 3 years i was in all india institute of medical sciences i was the uh, active a uh, member of medical council of india for 5 years and now i am in delhi medical council for 5 years okay. and continuously working for doctors cause and uh, one thing was there that the men's health was also one of the passion one of the topic which is which is a neglected uh, narrative according to me and uh, what has happened in the mil uh, first millennium if we say year 1 bc to 1000 bc it was the time when when men's health was the sexual health equivalent and and it was the time when all the systems of medicines they were in the infancy or they were developing and then the second millennium we lived and last 200 years it was totally neglected men's health and it was dominated by women health all these years maybe you can say 1800 year before that in this three millennium story uh, women health was neglected but in last 200 years it was so much neglected that uh, people stop talking about men's health and we also forget about men's health sexual health and it had gone to quax it has gone to you, you call them chola chap doctors and and we were on back seat and it was the disaster for uh, our, our human uh, uh, 
uh, health or the global health or global GDP or, or al also the population explosion which is happening, uh, happening. it was the explosion of the female uh, uh, health or female population because at birth the male is dominating 107 to 100 in the ratio all over the world but when the person crosses 80 years of age after, at that time it is the ratio is so bad you can imagine that eight female to one male so male is dying early and suffering more throughout its journey so india is becoming a gray nation any nation with more than eight percent population more than 60 years of age is a gray nation or aging nation and india has already entered into that league but it is becoming feminized gray nation as i have explained and before we become rich we are old uh, becoming old and socially dependent population and i told you that men's health is neglected throughout and and the men the feature figure which i was telling you in the first millennium which was the figure where, where it was the real uh, uh, men which was uh, with the sexual health or andrology dominated men is becoming the metabolic uh, syndrome suffering men and we are we are plagued by several diseases and i'll come to that also and uh, the key reasons why we look into men's health is uh, i have told you that male or female ratio which is at birth is one is to one is becoming 10 is to one after anybody who is uh, living more than 100 years so it is 10 female to one and that is very very self-telling story and uh, there is uh, no central program today after independence of uh, India also in 75 years and uh, most of the programs are either maternal child health uh, dominated or communicable disease or non-communicable disease dominated. Nobody is talking about men. It, there is a economic uh, slowdown, loss of men is equal to loss of economy because in any population they are the dominant uh, uh, contributors for the economy and GDP uh, depreciation is there and uh, wellness and sexual health needs experts uh, 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 should be uh, should be the experts and they should not be the quacks and it is now for all the doctors all the uh, people related to medi uh, this health industry it is 20000 uh, plus uh, crore business and and uh, it, it, uh, today out of this only 500 to 600 crore is regulated now there are salient points of men's health strategy men does not visit uh, uh, that is very important and uh, the, the health facilities men uh, is not uh, visiting and is not getting himself uh, insured also and also Men, men is always worrying when when it takes uh, time. Not about uh, metabolic syndrome, not about other cancer or other ailments. Men is always worries about penis, and and, and also uh, beyond health, it affects the gender divide, affects the national economics. I have explained, and uh, uh, there is attachment of life less uh, intimidity friendly facility or easy accessibility and there is holistic therapy men will not go to the different doctors provide one stop shop and provide comfortable um, initial experience and now why men is unhealthy you see in the whole journey what is happening that men at inception is weak you know the concept when the conception occurs a lot many fetuses are male only and female is not that dominant but there is a difference in x and y chromosome and and there the immunity is wise men is suffering female immunity is stronger at right from the birth and and also the substance abuse like smoking alcohol that is more in men and also mental health is a, a great setback for men so uh, men's health is important and and international literature review yielded seven definitions of men's health in english speaking and five definitions in general german included in the uh, gray literature and uh, 
it it means that catered to diseases specific to men or catered to diseases more common in men and men's health is andrology or it is different what is the meaning of andrology andrology is actually the study of uh, men only and internationally regarded as the definition but what is happening andrology today we are considering with the only sexuality and infertility and we are forgetting other uh, dimensions of men's health you see when men is there and women is there at birth both are uh, having the health visit because the, as a baby after that uh, women uh, get, start uh, uh, menstruating and and uh, somehow the medical attention by any kind of pathy is there and then in pregnancy and and when the births are there there are so child births uh, the women is attended medically and then in the terminal illnesses in the, in the, you are seeing in this cartoon uh, with female that's how many mandatory health visits are mostly occurring but what is happening in men men when is born is uh, attended and after that he feels that he is a, a, a perfect uh, person and he doesn't need medical attention and ultimately at uh, at the time of terminal illness or death the man is attended and in between he is totally neglected uh, entity and and uh, th there is a trigger of uh, interaction with the health care um, uh, there are many opportunity opportunities for female but for men men it is uh, unable uh, to get those uh, triggers for uh, opportunities so men need needs are different there is a high uh, uh, threshold men men is a self reliant perception that he is stronger sex himself he feels and he is he feels a shame in declaring that he is not well and uh, also there is a lot of substance uh, abuse like uh, countries like russia and all because of that men is dying 12 years earlier than women so men is different because uh, specific diseases are there common diseases are there and more morbid diseases the morbidity is more in men that is now uh, available fact and and uh, when we talk about men's health andrology which which is the actual mental definition of uh, andrology is a small part of men's health and and uh, sexology is even smaller uh, part of their overall men's health so we should understand that men's health is not sexual health only so when we were talking about longevity in all the countries you you are seeing that men is in uh, uh, pink and uh, you uh, sorry men is in uh, blue and uh, women is in pink and you are seeing that in almost all the countries the men is uh, living shorter than women only qatar is one country where uh, Uh, men is living two years uh, longer, but in Russia, I told uh, living twelve years shorter. And if you are talking about life life expectancy in birth, uh, you are seeing all the country. Uh, you see that uh, women uh, are outliving the men, and also this is uh, various reasons of the world where where it is divided according to. shaded portions where women is living 10 year more 6 to 9 year more in other regions in many places it is more than 5 years which is the average and also men uh, when men is living more than women only one country is there and what is the story inside india is a large country it is almost uh, one fifth of the whole world's population but you see that uh, various states are there and and you can you can see your state also in this chart and uh, and uh, what is happening that in uh, 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 pradesh men is living 9 year shorter than uh, women you you can see and uh, the the situation is, is that in uh, in uh, Daily, it is it is almost uh, three to four years. Uh, men is living shorter, and similarly in the other states, uh, the same thing is happening. In Andhra Pradesh, uh, it is happening that uh, men is living uh, lifespan is sixty eight point seven, and female is seventy one point four. So you can see that story in India is not uh, different, and men is dying early 
and and is also suffering more i'll come to that also uh, now the basic x and y chromosomes when we scientifically study them x contains 3000 genes and y only 50 most of the diseases are uh, transmitting genes hereditary diseases uh, which are transmitted from the male uh, y chromosome and if you know very well if scientifically we say x0 is turner syndrome that can that fetus can survive but Y0, you have never heard. So X, X when is female, it is it is a luxury. 2X is a luxury. 3X can survive, but uh, Y0 cannot survive. So you can understand that uh, X chromosome is, is, is a better equipped chromosome with 3000 genes, better energy, long telomeres, and, and uh, also energy efficient and also give us better immunity. And in Y, the uh, smaller limb of uh, Y, that is becoming smaller and smaller with the age and it is endangered that in another 100 uh, million years, it will totally disappear. So we can go to the extent of saying that males are the endangered uh, uh, gender on the verge of extinction in the time to come. And, and therefore, when we talk about these uh, disorders, uh, uh, genetic or otherwise, you see that all kind of psychiatric uh, sickness, illness are more, autism is more in male and Asperger syndrome, milder form of autism is 10 times more in male than female. Suicides are more in male, four times more suicidal deaths. And also cancer is more in male. Uh, you can see the cardiovascular burden is more in male as Dr. Bhatt was uh, telling that atherosclerosis and all, they are more, the strokes are more, neurological problems are more, and, and before the penile vessels, they are getting affected the, in the, for the penis blood supply before two years before the heart suffer and um, uh, the heart suffers uh, two years later than erectile dysfunction. And also uh, if you talk about the neurological uh, problem or stroke, it, it is occurring, ED is occurring, erectile dysfunction 10 years before the actual uh, 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 the uh, incidence of uh, stroke and therefore hypertension is also more in in uh, cad or triple vessel disease is also more in male uh, in in heart and also cancer i have already told it is a huge difference that like uh, for uh, 410000 men in developed countries die each year against 188000 women and uh, diabetes in India, it is a diabetic capital and uh, it is more in men. And uh, if you see that uh, we can say safely that uh, the total number of diabetics in the world is more males. It is. It may be true that in some countries, the women are suffering more with diabetes, but overall in the world in number, the male is suffering more dangerous occupations, whether it is uh, occupational uh, hazards or it is wartime injury, it is more in men, road traffic accidents more in men, suicidal tendencies and suicidal deaths are more in men, the smoking is more in men, India is number two in smoking in the world and just next to China and uh, we have both kind of uh, tobacco chewing. Uh, smoking and non-smoking use of uh, tobacco and it is more in male alcohol is more in male and also now coming to infection like you can say that certain behavioral problems are there there are certain other factors which are there but what about the bacterial infection uniformly whether they are viral or bacterial infections they are more in male immunity i told you in the beginning is weaker in male and the newborn children they are suffering from pneumonias they are suffering from the uh, premature births. They are suffering from intracranial hemorrhage. Everything is more in male. Bacterial infections are more in male. And also, uh, there is a parasitic infections. They are also more in male. And uh, when you talk about the brand, uh, throughout the life, uh, I like the, uh, right from the infancy to the death, this is male dominated trend for infections also and recently you have seen that what is happening the covid what is happening in covid 
So, uh, if, before that tuberculosis, I told you that is also more in male and COVID is it almost in many studies, almost 80% in male and 20% in female. So, this may be uh, the thing uh, if you now just try to recollect, you must have uh, seen that this is the trend going on and, and uh, word over data is showing that and and uh, it is also in many countries when it is studied it is 64 percent to 70 percent it is in male the covid infection and the gender gap is there even for the death also because of covid for every 10 women hospitalized or killed by covid there are 12 men hospitalized 18 men men admitted in icu and 14 men died so you can see that how it is affecting more uh, men is more vulnerable because of all the reasons which I have enumerated and now coming to recent uh, episodes of mucormycosis. And when this data was studied across India, it is dominated two third, one third in male. And uh, what is happening because of that, I, my hospital and my uh, uh, I am alumni of uh, AIMS also. I uh, tried to see the data in two hospitals. You can see that the out of total cases, uh, the ratio was two is to one, male is to female, and also that ratio was maintained in the deaths also. So, so why men is uh, more prone? We have already discussed. It is uh, um, the problem of immunity, problem of X Y chromosome. Uh, also, male is the firmer sex, and also. So uh, the, um, the mitochondria, long telomeres, these all are the factors that uh, we, uh, male sex is weaker sex uh, health wise. And also when you go for a workout or you go for bodybuilding, the, we burn twice the energy compared to female for the same effort. Therefore, those who are the bodybuilders, who are, who are heavy bodybuilders, they suffer more because they burn their uh, their their, their uh, energy, their their cells uh, become aging aged cells uh, faster, and therefore everything should be in moderation. So I was telling you about uh, these uh, different diseases, bed ridden or restricted days of activities, loss of days, and uh, also illness episodes. All are more in male. HIV, AIDS, and STD is also more in male, and respiratory diseases, tuberculosis, more in male. So, uh, in Corona, when I was discussing at the bottom of this cartoon, you just concentrate that severe disease, higher mortality is in male, and in female, it is less severe disease and lower mortality. And it is because of that differential in the immune response, also. And also, ACE receptors, you know. ACE receptors, which are the gateway for uh, coronavirus, they are more in number on male uh, and in male organs compared to females. So you can understand how male is suffering everywhere. And uh, th there is an effect on uh, sex organs also, their testicular changes, infiltrations, the hypo hyperthermia is there. And because of all that, autoimmune viral orchitis in 19% of the cases, ultimately the sex is affected and also infertility. And also uh, what is happening that uh, in the survey, when, uh, what is the interest, the libido in the sex cycle, what is happening? that uh, we are we are seeing that what is the libido how much is the desire indian men have the least sex in the in the world and and there this is the men's health survey report which is saying and there are various reasons of sexual dysfunction also there is no person who at least once in the lifetime he has not suffered from uh, erectile dysfunction and as uh, the severity may be different but, and it may be related to metabolic syndrome also. There is a specific uh, questionnaire which should be available each and every clinic that is IIEF five question questionnaire. And that is very important. And the fasting blood sugar uh, and the lipid profile are very important uh, tools in the, for the lab investigations and lower testosterone levels, which are the main reason for midlife crisis that after 40 years of age. It, it, 
these are the important factors with, which affect not only the men's health, but the sexual health in the coming year. And testosterone deficiency, you know, now the D3, the vitamin D is also recognized. And in India, that level of vitamin D is also very low. And uh, male is suffering heavily because of that, because of sexual dysfunction, because of the thyroid disorder, because of so many body problems. And the same is uh, with the testosterone. If you are not correcting the testosterone, uh, the erectile dysfunction uh, will not uh, get corrected and your sildenafil will not work, Viagra will not work. And therefore, whenever there is erectile dysfunction, you have to check your testosterone levels of your patient. And after that, all these problems which are of depression or fatigue or increased uh, risk of Alzheimer's, and fat, uh, central fat or uh, obesity or increased uh, in the ED and low libido, these all problems will keep on persisting if we are not uh, um, taking care of uh, the uh, testosterone levels. So, therefore, in all these uh, situations, I told you that uh, uh, ED can be the Sentinel marker, it is, can be the barometer of male health, and ED should be the questionnaire should be integrated in all the clinics, whether it is uh, the physician clinic or it is endocrine clinic, it is urologist clinic, or it is it is a diabetic clinic or or, or any clinic because there are many medications which are causing ED and therefore it should be the integral part. We should go for direct questioning. We should not give the scope to the quacks and uh, Jola Chap doctors uh, who, who, who are dominating in last uh, these 100, 150 years. And we have to take it back and the urologist has to lead for that. And sexual dysfunction is actually a part of the metabolic syndrome and everything is uh, um, concerned with that and the ed is the central marker and penis is the barometer of uh, men's health and and therefore uh, i'll i'll just like to show you uh, this in this crowded slide that 10 almost 10 studies have been done and uh, you see when you each thing you correlate with various uh, diseases in men right from physical disabilities, hypertension components of metabolic syndrome, or, or, or also the uh, hypo, hyperthyroidism, uh, COPD, or psychological features. ED is one common factor in all. So if, if erectile function is uh, all right, man is healthy. And, and this is important thing which I wanted to convey to you. And the health seeking behavior, I told, uh, told you that men think that they are very, very safe and they are the stronger sex, which is not the um, actual uh, thing. And the uh, problem is that there is no organized data available with us, no dedicated scientific body was there uh, till now. We have created Men's Health Society of India and in 2018, Indian Medical Association recognized, I got it uh, recognized and a standing committee has been created by of uh, in uh, indian medical association also and uh, when uh, there was a occasion of world medical association president for, was from india and uh, the, his keynote address was on men's health all the material was prepared by me for that and it becomes evident in the entire world within 10 years of our efforts and uh, you see now, now even the master plan is uh, uh, under preparation in Delhi. Many other states, they, it must be under preparation. We are preparing of 2041 and there are very few lines written on health. And uh, in fact, on men's health, nothing has been written. And we are, we are, our efforts are happening. And you see even in US, a developed country, the breast cancer received 60 million more than prostate cancer and ovarian cancer cancer received uh, uh, 64 million more than uh, counterpart um, uh, testicular cancer. And therefore, uh, when we saw that in a millennium development goals were set up in 2000, there also only few lines uh, goal four in goal four and five in 200 page document. Only this uh, within the box, you can see this was only related to uh, the health 
and men's health was totally omitted and uh, there are awareness programs going on in india we are we are leading that and uh, in many countries like blue monday men's health month was the last uh, uh, month and uh, those who have attended those uh, programs seven programs we conducted a lot of awareness is going on there is a need of harmonization of the um, society there is, should be concept of house husbands and uh, women's soldiers therefore uh, there should be mingling and in in, in the, the the mixing of the society and all both the sex should be not only for so, social deprivation issues but also for the health issues should be treated equally and uh, there are many answer, unanswered uh, questions about men's health that way that who should be the primary care provider who should lead the movement and i'll tell you the family physician the your the basic mbbs doctor should be the the men's health expert and urologist is in the right place to lead this movement and and therefore we have to create men's health centers we have to create men's health friendly institutions and men's health uh, friendly health policy and the new initiative programs amongst the national health programs and uh, what can we do about it is particular times of vulnerability are we should understand the teenager the psychological uh, health is very important midlife crisis is important when when the andropause occurs and also break the hardonian image and we should care for male uh, that is important there is a need of attitude change where the attitude is that i can do everything i don't depend on anybody i don't need anybody but it should be i can't depend on others in the society to take care of me so i need to rely on myself and because others like my family are depending on me i really need to take care of myself so we have to uh, make a choice and therefore men's health society of india was created this is the inauguration of the society at new delhi and dr jitender prashad who is in pmo he is inaugurating the society he himself is uh, the endocrinologist and this happened in 2018 this is the world medical association keynote address which i was referring to and in the past men was a strong supposed to be stronger sex as i told in the present millennium men is more susceptible we are understanding and the future is for identification acceptance screening prevention integration specialization and also uh, men's health uh, friendly clinics and data and uh, also guidelines that becomes important and therefore we have created the training modules these training modules are different for the basic family physician it is module 1 and for the urologist for the cardiologist for the endocrinologist in the middle level it is the uh, module 2 and if somebody wants that exclusive men's health practices to be done there are five centers in india already working on the basis of module 3 and they are the pure men's health clinics or men men's health institutions and uh, many of our urologists they are doing it dr patnaik is doing dr in bombay dr ajay kumar has now opened a special men's health uh, unit in paras hospital patna and uh, dr uh, tamar has and uh, i'll i'll keep on naming and five units we are inaugurating this month in delhi and uh, and uh, we have created uh, 10 modules delhi medical association adopted them and they are the modules training modules for the primary physician basically what we want to understand when not to refer actually we are teaching till now that when to refer that this happen then you refer this happen then to refer who will tell you that when not to refer and therefore these 10 modules for the basic physician family physician and and the prostate health sexual dysfunction cancer diabetes hypertension cardiac health each module self contained modules are there obesity and metabolic syndrome diabetes that is diabetes and obesity is a big problem in india and that uh, associated with erectile dysfunction and also infectious diseases you have seen the episodes of corona episodes of uh, uh, neonatal pneumonias episodes of uh, meningo 
meningeal uh, infections and also now the mucormycosis you have you must have understood this is our infectious disease module and data management and men's health guidelines which we have released in 2019 the urological society of india has also started the men's health and andrology sub specialty in indian school of urology where i happen to be the chairman uh, of indian school of urology and i was the convener and before that deputy convener with the pincha uh, for four years and uh, we have uh, we are developing the this specialty in uh, urology also and what i was telling that men's health expert is uh, sitting at the center you are converting each and every doctor mbbs doctor into expert and your family physician is now family uh, specialist family health specialist and uh, all the 32 sub specialties are around him for for uh, deciding when to refer to them and the patient comes back to him and this should be the real uh, model and uh, therefore uh, we have to pursue it and it is, there is a morphing of the practice to the men's health we should understand what is men's health then equip yourself and your clinic to deal with men's health problem maybe uroflometer maybe the questionnaire which which should be lying there maybe some some of the basic uh, requirements which are not very costly and you can convert your uh, general clinic into specialist clinic or uh, if you are in 6 uh, days you are working in your establishment one day you can dedicate for men's health or few hours you can dedicate for men's health uh, specialized clinic and ultimately we have to reform our facility and also associate for a social cause so that we bring the change in the aging we, we can stop the feminizing feminization of the aging population in india and also the strategies to initiate uh there and uh, we we should have the entry checkups before marriage checkup executive checkups which are started i started for the executive the men's health checkup i i got it integrated when i am i'm i'm working in central health service and you know if you see for ias and other administrative services it is inbuilt in the health checkup and also uh, make health an important performer indicator and also make health uh, accessible and friendly and also motivate awareness in male that it is important that they get come and get examined and also um, also get uh, get uh, insured there there are recommended uh, checkups we have released the men's health guidelines also that copy should be available to everybody now indian medical association has adopted it as the national program and they are uh, working with us uh, on the uh, fresh version of men's health guidelines and also uh, there are different issues in different ages so men's health checklist is there for 18 to 30 30 to 50 and 50 year more uh, uh, time there is a continuum uh, through the comorbidities also as there is continuum through the aging uh, at all the ages the men's health is important i told you right from the infancy till, till the death and therefore the comorbidities are not independent erect dysfunction and endothelial dysfunction we have to focus the ed is bothersome but uh, and uh, it is uh, hidden uh, endothelial dysfunction is hidden and it can be fatal you know that in corona also diabetes is affecting uh, endothelial function uh, metabolic syndrome is affecting endothelial system corona is affecting endothelial uh, uh, function and therefore we it is very important to understand ed is equal to ed that is endothelial dysfunction holistic ma management for men is the key and and uh, family physician can can uh, be there and urologist has to lead this cause and uh, when we are uh, understanding the erection and different stages and how it is affecting i'll not go into the details that what is happening at the time of uh, desire at the time of performance or at the time of ejaculation and uh, uh, what all is happening uh, when failure of uh, uh, erection is there venous leak is there atherosclerosis is there but uh, there there are uh, these issues which can be dealt at the 
basic primary level and this is the training modules we are this, uh, saying we should understand however that there is complicated ed erectile dysfunction and then you have to refer it cannot be dealt by the family physician that post-traumatic post-surgery psychiatric illness major uncontrolled comorbidity ckd copd or other alternate uh, altered orientation is there hormonal disturbances are there spinal cord injuries here it is best to refer so we should understand when to refer when not to refer and when not to refer is more important for men's health and what does this clinic offer we have uh, almost enumerated everything uh, they right from screening to the management of the diseases and uh, then the deciding where is the complicated ed and we have to refer and therefore uh, we, the, we, this men's health clinic should cater to lifestyle disorders also it is not only sexual disorder and therefore all the disorders uh, like obesity hypertension metabolic syndrome uh, bph and cancer and prevention they all should be the part Part of men's health, not only erectile function, early ejaculation or ejaculated dysfunctions or hypoactive uh, desire, etc. So there is a patient workflow in your uh, your clinic. There is a registration, then there is evaluation on these lines. Then uh, you decide the referrals and follow-ups are. Uh, after the patient is referred, they come back to you and the follow-up is there. And the focus on the sexual health of men is there. Uh, that is the most important. It is not only the sexual health, it is sexual health. And more than that, it is andrological health. More than that, it is the men's health. And uh, we, what we will need, the armamentarium, the couple of rooms in your, which is already in many clinics, the license with the experts, you should have the list for all the people where you may need to refer and also sample collection facility, basic sample, the lipid profile, testosterone, blood sugar and all. And also, of course, some of the uh, uh, things like Euroflometry because men will need Euroflometry, ECG and uh, instrument for assessment. They are not very costly. If we see the uh, financial cost, it is not more than 20,000, 30,000 uh, um, uh, cost for each and uh, other facility. And, and uh, what uh, the output is going to be uh, 500 to 2000 uh, wellness for wellness consultation which is happening already in the functioning clinics and uh, it is uh, sustainable finances when you are uh, doing the 30 patients per month that is one patient per day will will um, uh, take you to the break even point and ultimately it becomes profitable for anybody who is uh, adding uh, the facility of men's health or becoming the men's health expert or specialist uh, in, in the uh, in, in this so, so there is a need of men's health uh, uh, and uh, men's uh, men's care and uh, that uh, we know that there was so much controversy, Ramdev versus uh, doctors and all. We worked on that and we, we, have, we say now that lifestyle changes are the first thing that include yoga and lifestyle management also. The second step is nutraceuticals or the Ayurveda where Rasayan principle also comes. And then when everything fails, then comes medication and where the modern medicine has no alternative. We are the definitive uh, uh, cures we are providing and we are medicine also fail. We start with the surgery or maybe various branches like urology and all. So this is a continuum of healthcare. It is not one pathy versus another pathy. It is not uh, the question that Paul, I'll uh, conclude that polypathy is good, but uh, the mixopathy or cross-pathy is not good. So that is the message, inbuilt message in this uh, program also. So future directions are that pledge to unite uh, together to establish men's health uh, as an integrated specialization, provide men's health friendly facilities, men's health experts are to be created men's health focus clinic or establishments are to be created and then uh, with the guidelines we have already created we have to go for men's health national program or uh, and uh, let us come all together irrespective of our specialty it needs a back integration of all the specialties. It needs a back integration for 50% of birds population, which is men. 
and we have to take care of men men is dying early and is suffering more throughout life and therefore I, my message is care for men and men should care for himself thank you very much thank you sir thank you very much that's an excellent uh, statistical based talk actually uh, 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 everybody wants the result uh, very fast first if they understand that this amount of uh, uh, this amount of uh, uh, morbidity is there with men's health we did not realize uh, 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 as you are telling that the y chromosome has limited genes that is surprising fact and it is uh, eye opening talk that uh, we have to be aware of all these diseases because we are more prone Sir, quick questions, I will ask 4 or 5 questions and then we will conclude the session. An energetic talk, I must say. Uh, uh, first question, when should we get testosterone levels in our life if we have a normal lifestyle? See, like uh, menopause, uh, the, the hormonal uh, variations start at the beyond the age of 40. First opportunity or first symptomatic opportunistic screening should be done after 40 years of age. And I have done some studies. I have done a try to correlate with the low testosterone with the LUTs also, but they were not significant. But it is definitely there that if the testosterone is low, or uh, clinically you see that there are symptoms, then free testosterone becomes important. And uh, and beyond 40 years of age, which is midlife crisis. Uh, the important. prolactin, FSH, LH, TSH is also important in after 40 years? See, it, it depends, but uh, testosterone is more most important. If there are fertility issues, then we go for other testing also. But in routine, we don't do the FSH, LH and uh, prolactin. A lot, lot of discussion is there on that heavy bodybuilders will have low testosterone and they will suffer from hypotestosteronism. Is it uh, any logic or you no? Know? Yeah, because they are uh, taking lot many supplements. They are they, they are taking steroids. They are taking bodybuilding material. I told you that uh, that is uh, burning their uh, the cells also. It is the fast burning uh, of the energy resources. The mitochondria and all are so um, uh, um, structured in male uh, that they are they are inferior to female. I can say. And, and therefore, fast burning is there. These all people will uh, suffer from uh, low testosterone in the long run. Sir, exactly midlife crisis is only hypotestosteronism or any other than that. A lot of people have so much uh, uh, conflict, so much uh, bad impression about to talk about that. People think that it is an affair having with another female like that. They will think, uh, what exactly? Is it a scientific word or a loose word? Uh, I have not understood which which word mid mid midlife cry midlife yeah, cry. midlife crisis when I mention it it is because of the testosterone lower testosterone or also in the, the normal range at the lower end when testosterone is there and especially it becomes important in India when it is associated with the uh, diabetic uh, status also. And therefore, uh, it is not only that low testosterone, it is also the symptomatic uh, symptom complex, which is associated with that at that age. It is depression. The look of the person will be will be depressive look and uh, there will be central obesity. So many problems are there, which you may not be able to correlate, but they are all correlated. It is not that uh, relation with female or uh, dhat syndrome or other things uh, uh, which, which uh, people are... Uh, just uh, suspecting but uh, it is uh, the midlife uh, crisis is, is a real uh, problem but we have to understand it and uh, boost all the myths also sir do you if somebody has low testosterone is it proven that regular testosterone intake by injections is helpful to prolong the uh, uh, early side effects of metabolic syndrome 
etcetera uh, yes uh, yes uh, injection is one good way also but the diurnal variations are not there with that uh, injection therapy and therefore the oral therapy or the gel which we are using they 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 are given so that the diurnal variations are not disturbed but if you give the depo in injections the long term in injections that the uniform level of testosterone occur and it is under it is for study and there there is more one more thing the endogen Uh, testosterone and exogenous testosterone are different and and the effect is also different endogenous uh, testosterone are more there are no drugs which can stimulate the endo endogenous uh, testosterone the studies are going on now the new uh, gazette notification is there in uh, for studying certain uh, uh, plant sources also where it is claimed that uh, these are uh, there are uh, some 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 of the herbs or some of the plants where they have identified some alkaloid alkaloids uh, which are being studied that they will be increasing the testosterone level but it is not concluded no. and we are giving in drug controller journal i am a member there also and yes. uh, we have given some uh, some 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 um, permissions for the for conducting trials last question sir uh smoking is definitely injurious to health alcohol there is some controversy that people say that it increases the mood it increases the testosterone levels if taken in a smaller amounts on regular basis i am not asking that in a medical context i am asking unofficially that uh, th there are studies also proven that up to 30 ml it, it in improves the cytochrome 350 uh, enzyme levels and then uh, improves the health Does, especially wine red wine they say uh, does it have any sense uh, in this present day talk or not sir when we talk about smoking and substance abuse then we have we talk about quantity also as you are saying 30 ml it has been found that for the lipid metabolism and for for certain actions in the body the alcohol may be beneficial in the low uh, uh, um, uh, amount but but uh, it is uh, Uh, if you avoid alcohol it doesn't mean that it will take away your sexual powers so therefore it is a myth that uh, for increasing that you will be adding alcohol to your diet but that is uh, yes uh, the alcohol may not be harmful in very small quantities but sometime we are not able to control that that on smoking smoking is bad on all aspects all or, uh, organs and even one cigarette is bad a pack of uh, berries is bad everything is bad and this is one addiction when you withdraw you can recover otherwise whatever damages are there because of alcohol they are non recoverable but it, it, yes if ed is there and uh, if you stop smoking the ed may improve automatically and uh, therefore the effects bad effects of uh, um, uh, it is studied it is reported documented and proven now that if you stop smoking uh, your erectile function will in, improve and uh, your uh, potency will be but better. same may not be with the alcohol Uh, yeah same is not true with the alcohol so thank you very much sir that is a great uh, information really i appreciate uh, uh, one one must go into the depth and all the details in future if possible we'll go in a sub sub topic and then listen from you amazing energy sir amazing energy you have my god so we will we'll pray the god that you will continue your energy and enlighten the young urologists with your uh, wide uh, multitasking i really appreciate sir thank you very much sir thank you very much thank you for the opportunity